Welcome back to the History of the Banlist series. This episode is over the September 2007 OCG list, then briefly looking at the TCG list as well. But first, a minor adjustment coming from the June 2007 TCG list. Green Baboon Defender of the Forest and Magical Stone Excavation both go to 1. This is in part for parity with the OCG list, as both cards were already limited in the OCG. Green Baboon Defender of the Forest is fairly resilient and can be used to keep up pressure in spite of removal. Magical Stone Excavation is an expensive option for spell recursion. At the time, I would say the best application for the card is in the emerging Diamond Dude Turbo decks. Since the cost can be functionally ignored, if you can hit it off of Destiny Hero Diamond Dude's effect. Now, onto the new OCG list. Top of the newly forbidden list is Confiscation, which is a pretty nasty card to play against. Getting access to targeted hand disruption is almost always worth a thousand life points. To me, this card is rightfully banned because it feels really bad to lose your counterplay tool to the opponent's Confiscation. This ban is similar to what happened to the Forceful Sentry, and I suspect the lag between the two cards is based on that life point cost, making Confiscation just look a little bit more balanced than it actually was. Even though Thousand Eyes Restrict is banned, I reluctantly agree with the Metamorphosis ban. Because the card limits design space, since you always have to consider the existence when creating new fusion monsters. Plus, Last Warrior from Another Planet is a pretty nasty stun tool and having access to it with just a level 7 monster on board and metamorphosis can be overpowered. On top of all that, Demise decks were also using the card to bring out Cyber Twin Dragon as another option to facilitate the OTK. Snatch Steel is another dirty card. It just feels so wrong to steal your opponent's only monster, then attack for game, and it makes sense that the card finally got banned. That life point refund does not make up for the strength of the effect, since stealing the opponent's monster is one of the stronger effects in the game. Last for the ban cards this time is Ring of Destruction, which is very efficient monster removal since it does not have a discard cost like Tribute to the Doomed or Rageki Break for example. The symmetric burn effect is also enough to raise some eyebrows. Since the card can destroy an opponent's monster, this could be neutral card advantage on a burn card, which is pretty uncommon. Plus, there's the reasonable ceiling for the card in the current metagame to be at least 2,000 life points of damage. Combine that with the card's ability to cause ties, and you can see why the card is not conducive to tournament play. On to the newly limited cards. Two wizards escaped the ban list, those being Breaker the Magical Warrior and Magician of Faith. In terms of attack points, Breaker is a strong monster, on par with the strongest normal monsters at the time but with the additional benefit of having the option for spell and trap removal. The value of a plus one in card advantage cannot be understated. Which ties into the other spellcaster coming off the list. Magician of Faith gets released as well, but as with Breaker, not for very long. Getting back a key spell card is always strong, although I would argue that Magician of Faith is not necessarily the best option since it takes a slow flip effect monster having to be set instead of the more expensive but instant access of magical stone excavation. Card advantage versus speed is a trade-off that depends largely on the format in question, but Magician of Faith is still a great card. Maybe too good for the time. A trio of new monsters immediately go from 3 to 1, with two of them having a pretty good reason in my opinion. Card Trooper is quite the strong card on its own, giving access to self-milling to gain attack points, and paying for itself with a card draw when destroyed. Nice. The problem with the card is the troop dupe scoop combo, where a card trooper is summoned, hopefully onto an empty board, then machine duplication is activated to bring out two more card troopers, then milling nine cards in total to put 5700 damage on board. This is not enough for an OTK, but the package is still really strong, since playsets of card trooper were in most decks at the time. Limiting the card to 1 stops this combo, and makes machine duplication a lot less scary. This hit can also be seen as a way to encourage deck diversity, since Card Trooper was at staple status. Next up is Destiny Hero Disc Commander, which is a member of the Hero Super Archetype, so that means it's searchable with Stratos. But the real problem with the card is getting to draw 2 cards when it's special summoned from Grave. Card of Safe Return is not banned yet so these cards in conjunction can theoretically make for a very powerful draw engine. And since Destiny engines were already seeing a lot of experimentation, it makes sense to limit the commander. I am not entirely convinced that Snipe Hunter needed to be limited, 
although the card is pretty efficient removal, and it's not even limited to being once per turn. Snipe Hunter might also be a win more card, where it's best when you have plenty of cards in hand and already have a good position. This card is limited alongside a couple other suspicious spells, but future simming limits will help put those in context as well. Fisher and Smashing Ground are both efficient one for one monster removal options, similar to Snipe Hunter, although there is less control in selecting targets. Speaking of control, Brain Control is limited which makes sense considering that Change of Heart is already banned and Snatch Steel just joined it. The watered down version of Change of Heart being limited makes sense for the moment at least. I think the limitation of Megamorph is a soft hit on Demise OTK decks, where the card was equipped to Doomdozer to reach the perfect 8000 points of damage when Demise was already on board. Otherwise, the card is pretty unreliable and can have the attack of the equipped monster if you have the life point lead. Trap Dust Chute is limited for much of the same reason as Confiscation, although Trap Dust Chute is a little hard to use with that activation condition, so it makes sense that they would gradually restrict the card. Transmigration Prophecy is a pretty cool card in my opinion, and it can be used to recycle important cards from grave to deck, and since it's a trap card, can even be used to disrupt the opponent when they activate a card which targets a card in the graveyard. Last card limited is Wall of Revealing Light, which for one easy payment of 3,000 life points prevents most meta-relevant monsters from attacking. I think this card is worse than Gravity Bind, Level Lemma Area B, and especially Messenger of Peace install decks, but Wall of Revealing Light also has a little bit of gimmick potential, being able to pay huge amounts of life points, with Reversal Quiz being a potential partner in crime. Going alongside the limitation of Disc Commander is the semi-limit on Malicious. Malicious is excellent tribute fodder, and probably either the best or second best target to discard with Destiny Draw. Putting the card to 2 means that Malicious is one free tribute, but does have the knock-on effect of making the D-Draw engine less consistent as well. Speaking of which, another engine is hit as all three gadgets go to 2. This is not the biggest deal, as some gadget decks were already playing two copies of each, but it does limit the advantage ceiling for those decks. In an interesting turn of events, Jinzo and Royal Decree both go to 2, which sort of makes sense. Jinzo was a staple, but Royal Decree was also decent trap suppression. Having 5 trap floodgates might have been a bit too much for the time though. Experimentally, Nobleman of Crossout goes to 2, which is potentially a sign of changing times as some decks are becoming more aggressive and setting less, or maybe the intent is the other way around giving a wall-breaking tool against stall decks. It's hard to say the rationale behind this decision, but I think there is merit to both sides of the argument. Pot of Avarice goes to 2. Remember that the game is slower, so getting 5 monsters in Grave is a hurdle which generally takes at least a few rounds. Unlike the modern game, where you have already gone through 15 monsters before you finish making your board on the first turn, this card can be used to recycle floaters, with contemporary favorites being Mystic Tomato and Pyramid Turtle. Four cards end up leaving the list. DD Assailant, Protector of the Sanctuary, Deck Devastation Virus, and Good Goblin Housekeeping. DD Assailant was still seeing some play, but the easier to search slash summon DD Warrior Lady was still seen as the superior option. Protector of the Sanctuary is a dumb card. I see what they're going for to try to limit your opponent's draw power, but the card is desperately in need of an erratum due to the weird interaction with Disturbance Strategy. Deck Devastation Virus is not as good as Crush Card Virus, but is still a very impactful disruption tool, enabled by Dark World Silva and Gold, as well as plenty of zombies. I do think that the best use for DDV would be in side decks though. Good Goblin Housekeeping is theoretically a good draw card, especially in self-milling decks, but I think it's a little too awkward most of the time. Getting the first copy into Grave is tricky, because you probably don't want to activate it for a minus one in card advantage. Putting the card to 2 pretty much killed the appeal for me, and I'm glad to see it go back to 3. Popping over to the TCG, we have two additional limits, Marshmallon and Gold Sarcophagus. Marshmallon is a pretty strong stall tool. Spirit Reaper is already on the FNL list, so what about this new side grade? Instead of offering opportunistic hand disruption, it has a Meteor of Destruction effect. A thousand points of damage is quite a lot, 
since Marshmallon is very likely to survive attack from most monsters, barring Drillroid. Gold Sarcophagus is pretty much a strictly better version of Different Dimension Capsule, which was already seeing a little bit of competitive experimentation at the time. But Different Dimension Capsule has a weakness of remaining on the field where it is vulnerable to removal. Gold Sark is a mandatory effect, so it should go off unless it is negated, guaranteeing you that key card in a couple rounds. And since the card banished for Gold Sark is face up, you can sort of cheat the system by getting DD Scout Plane out early. Or, later on, use the card in combination with Necroface to banish 5 cards and potentially more since other copies of Necroface may be banished in the process. This is a pretty fair list. Softly checking machine variants, monarchs, gadgets, the Destiny Draw Engine, and Demise OTK decks without delivering a fatal blow to any meta deck. I think this is a pretty good list overall. Overall, I think this was also a pretty sound judgment and good read on the meta. I'm actually looking forward to next year though, as it is the end of an era and the beginning of the game really opening up.